Welcome back guys to Dinner Made Easy with Dina. Today we are going to be making chili and we're using dried beans. So I've had those beans soaking overnight and I'm getting ready to drain those and we're going to show you how to pull that together. It's really not as hard as you think. It might seem a little intimidating, but I'm going to show you how easy it is. And if I can do it, you can do it. So stay with me and we're going to pull that chili off together. Okay, so I'm just pouring these off. I'm using a pan so that I don't drop all the beans down the sink. Now the reason that you're supposed to soak your beans, this is, this is what I understand, is that when you soak your beans, it takes away a lot of that, whatever it is in the bean that can cause you to have an upset stomach, gassy, bloated feeling. And we don't want that, so <laughs> we're gonna try it this way and see how well it works. Now my mom and my grandma before her always made their chili this way. I mean, I'm sure that uh, they could have used canned chili, but you know, what fun is that? I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out. And then we are going to rinse our beans. And we're going to start with a fresh pot of nice cold water to get the beans started. And as you can see, these beans were a dark red. But after soaking them, they're kind of a pale red color now. But that's okay. It hasn't hurt anything. And we're going to take it from there. This also helps the beans to loosen up so they cook faster. Okay. So back in the pot with them. go ahead and we're going to put water in the pot. Now I, when I do this, I put a little more than just a cover, but not a whole lot because we're going to be adding other ingredients. And I like to have my chili um, a little bit thicker rather than thinner. And you know what, you can always add more liquid if you need to. So that's where I'm going to start mine. Well, maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's where I'm gonna start mine. And it's about an inch over the beans. And we're gonna go ahead and turn these on and get these up to a boil and then turn them down where they're on like a medium simmer. Because it is gonna take about uh, 35, 40 minutes for the beans to get tender. In the meantime, we're gonna get started on what really makes this delicious. Now there's a million and one wives tales and things about making chili and I'm not even going to begin to address all of those because we all know we have our ways and our favorite ways of doing it. Some people will put baking soda in their beans, you know, some people use beano. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do with your chili. I'm just going to make the chili the way I've always made it and we've never had issues with that. So. I've soaked the beans overnight, I rinsed them, and I covered them again with some fresh water up to about an inch. We've got it on the burner, it's on a high until it starts to boil, then I'm going to turn it down to about a medium low so that I have a, just a nice simmer going. And those are going to take about 30, well I'd say 30 to 40 minutes. So we're going to wait for about 20 minutes to start the second part of our chili. So, hey, listen guys, if you're enjoying the videos, please give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the video. If you have comments, I am always open for comments. I really appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and, and share with your friends. I really appreciate it. So, um, we'll get back to this as soon as we're ready for that second part. Okay, our beans are done and I let them simmer for about 40 minutes 
and then I turned the burner off because I was in the middle of something else. So the beans have been sitting here for about 45 minutes and they're done. And I did taste one to make sure, okay? Now there's, there's different ways of doing your beans. You could do the quick soak, just follow the directions on the package, but I really do prefer doing the overnight soak. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, because I do have two packages of those beans in here, And they are two packages like this, and they're 16 ounce, which is one pound. I'm gonna put one whole can, and this is 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes, right in there. These are, I don't know you guys, but I think these are about the best crushed tomatoes I've tried that are canned. I think they're really, really tasty, lots of flavor. Okay. Let's use some really good tomatoes in that. So I'm just going to stir that in. And the next thing that's going in here is going to be my tomato sauce. Okay. And we're going to put this together before we get the ground beef in there and all that other stuff. Okay. So then, since I am doing a double batch, I'm using one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce right in there and I'm gonna follow that up with one can of water. There we go. Now we're just gonna stir that together and let it kind of simmer there. Okay, so now we're gonna take two pounds of ground beef and we're gonna kind of crumble it up in here. It's about two pounds. You can use however much you wanna use, but I usually use a pound of ground beef per pound of beans. And I'm using 80-20 ground beef. And if you want to use a leaner meat, you can certainly do that. And I have some onions I've chopped up. So I'm putting the equivalent of two onions in here, juice and all, because I did use my um, <laughs> my food processor to chop the onions. Now I have my burner set to high until we get uh, the meat starting to brown. Okay. And we're gonna let that go for just a few minutes before we start adding in our seasonings. All right, let's get that stirred up. Looks like a lot of onion, but it's two onions. And I usually use one medium to large size onion per pound of ground beef. There we go. I guess I could have taken the onion juice out, but hey, that's a lot of really good flavor that I just don't want to miss out on. Okay, so I'm gonna start putting in some of our seasonings. And the first thing we're going to go in with is some cumin. So I have some ground cumin. And since it's a double batch, I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of cumin. Some garlic powder. And we're going to put in about a tablespoon. And, and of course, we're gonna taste test this when we get down to it, make sure that we got the seasonings right here. And about two tablespoons of chili powder, maybe three, I think we'll go with three. That was a generous three, I think. A few pepper flakes, just a few. We don't want it super spicy. Okay, some sea salt, some pepper, just regular black pepper that I just purchased and of course I, I bought it in um, the international food section because, well, you get a better deal on your spices there. And this is paprika. And so I put in about a tablespoon of paprika. Now let's give that a good stir. Oh, that smells really good. 
you can use the McCormick's or the Schillings mix if you like, but um, it's just the same spices. So I just decided to use the spices because, well, I can control how much I want of each that way. It's totally up to you how you do it. But I thought, you know what, if I went to the trouble to use dried beans in my recipe, I'm going to do this from the ground up and show you guys it's really not that difficult. I promise. And you know what? It's your chili, your way. You can add, you can take away whatever you want to do with it. Nobody's going to tell you it's wrong because it's yours. Okay, let's let that sit there for a little bit. We're also going to come in with some ketchup. Now the reason we use some ketchup is because we've got tomato sauce in there and we've got some crushed tomatoes in there. That's about a third of a cup. And the ketchup has sugar. And that sugar is going to help balance the acid in the tomato sauce and the crushed tomatoes. There's nothing worse than getting a stomach ache from the acidity in your chili, so we're not gonna do that. Now once we combine this, you can add, <clears throat> excuse me, you can add chilies, you can add hot sauce, uh, you can add jalapenos, whatever you like for heat. We, we're not real crazy on a lot of heat, so you know, we're just going to keep it mild, because that's the way most of us enjoy it. Let's go ahead and give these a stir over here. Those beans are looking good and smelling really delicious. So as soon as this meat is cooked thoroughly, we're going to put it into the pot with the beans and we're going to let that simmer for about an hour. And then we're going to give it a taste for seasonings and see how it's coming out. Should be just about ready by then. Okay. We're going to go ahead and combine the meat in with the beans and try not to splatter too much as we do it. Now, I think I'm going to need to put quite a bit more salt in here, but I just want to get it going first because we can always add to. Can't take away. Look at that so far. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the lid on this and we're going to let it simmer. So I'm going to tilt the lid just a little bit and just let that simmer for about an hour and I'm going to stir it occasionally. Okay, we're back with our chili and our chili has been simmering and I let it simmer for about, oh, an hour and a half. I got busy and that's okay. I just made sure it was on low and look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? It is, it's nice and thick, just the way we like it. It's got lots of meats in there and all kinds of wonderful things. Now, truth be told here, I did come back and taste the chili. And I came in and I just doubled up from the seasonings that I had already put in because there really wasn't nearly enough. So I put in the same exact amount, but I, so times two what I did. So I'll make sure to include that in my uh, recipe that I'll put in the description box down below. But um, the thing with chili is beans suck up lots of flavor. So you don't wanna make it bland, so don't make it bland. Um, I went ahead, like I said, and I doubled the amount of spices and seasonings that I put in the first time around. Now, I'm also gonna put in one can of diced green chilies. Now, this is mild. You can put in spicy if you want to. Something else that's really good in here is Rotel. If you put a can of either spicy or medium Rotel in here, oh man, that is so good, but Today, I am making a mild chili as per the request, so that's what I'm doing. Like I said before, if you want to zip this up, go right ahead, be my guest, and make it as spicy as you want, but I have been asked not to do that, 
So we're gonna keep it mild and then people can just individually kick the heat up for themselves. But I'm gonna get this. Okay, so we're gonna taste test this chili. Whew, it's been a long day. It looks wonderful. Mmm, that's it. Just putting the second hit of spices on here made a world of difference. So when it comes to that ketchup, I put about a half a cup of ketchup in here. Now remember, this is a double batch. If you're doing a single batch, you're only gonna put about a quarter of a cup. Put as much as you want in there if you want to. Um, but the only reason that I put it in there is because the sugar in the ketchup will calm down the acidity. You can use just sugar if you want to do that, but I kind of like the the tomatoey, ketchupy taste to it. Okay, so I'm going to get a bowl, and we're going to put that in a bowl and take a look at that. Now you can add cheese, you can add onions, whatever. You can add sour cream, all the goodnesses to this, and your meal is ready. Now when I get ready to serve this to the family, I'm going to make a cornbread in our cast iron skillet. So the secret of a really good cornbread in your cast iron skillet is put the cast iron skillet in the oven for about 30 minutes before you're gonna put your um, cornmeal mixture in there. And then as soon as it, you put your butter in there, just before you put that in there, and pour it in and you'll hear it sizzle. That is what's going to make that really delicious crust on that cornbread. So don't forget that step. It doesn't matter if you're using Jiffy Mix or if you're making that cornbread from scratch. It doesn't matter. If you've got a cast iron skillet, try that. I'm telling you, you will never do it any other way. Yes, you're seeing behind me, I've got lots of dishes back there. I've been doing dishes as I'm cooking today. Um, and I've done several different recipes I've made some meals for my niece who just had her baby. Um, I made some meals for some other folks that requested some meals. And I hopefully will have enough here today that I can offer some samples out to some of my friends in the community. So thanks for watching guys, really appreciate you. And thanks for the support for my channel. There again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It, um, my channel name is Dinner Made Easy with Dina, and I'm Dina, and if you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit that, that bell that's up there in the top corner. Um, that will let you know when I have a new video up, and I really appreciate it, and thank you for sharing it out there and all your comments. Okay, let's give this a try. I think this turned out really, really good. Let's see how it is with the sour cream and the cheese. Oh, that looks good. Mmm. This is what we need on these cold, rainy Northwest days, guys. Some good homemade chili. Oh, this is amazing. Mmm. You need to give this a try. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. And those dried beans, don't let those intimidate you. Try this. It's a really great chili. You guys have a good rest of your day. Bye now.